Welcome to the Web Art Academy. Many students around the world who joined our academy are asking similar questions, and therefore we have decided to create this video lesson so you can benefit from the knowledge we are about to share. This video lesson explains some aspects of traditional ways of oil painting. In the next half an hour, you will discover the importance of various painting layers, such as underpainting, dead color layer, and grisaille. Before we begin, I want to say a few words about who we are and how we can help you to improve your oil painting skills and knowledge. My name is Vladimir London, and together with fine artist Natalie Ricci, we created the Web Art Academy course for fine art students like you. So now you have an opportunity to study oil painting and drawing in the comfort of your own home, without spending thousands of dollars and years of your time in art schools and colleges. All video lessons in the Web Art Academy course are presented by talented and experienced fine artist Natalie Ricci. Natalie graduated from the Academy of Art and has since had numerous fine art exhibitions around Europe. She specializes in figurative oil painting, and her knowledge and experience in this medium will be very helpful to you today. As the founders of the Art Academy, we are receiving questions from art students in different countries who want to know the classical ways of making an oil painting, the ways that have been developed and used by the old masters of the Renaissance time. Unfortunately, these methods are no longer taught in contemporary art schools and colleges. The classical ways of oil painting are replaced with a faster and simpler approach, which, however, does not provide the same quality of painting. So if you want to discover some secrets of the old masters, we will be happy to share the traditional method of oil painting with you. With this said, let us begin. In the days of the old masters, the oil painting process followed very strict and defined rules. These rules were mandatory. For example, the preparation in dead colors for a full-color oil painting was so necessary that skipping this step was punishable by a fine, according to the Clause 10 of the Rouen's Guild of Painters' Guidebook, written in 1507. You might be wondering what the dead color is, and why it was so important to the old masters. To give you an overview, I will explain briefly the oil painting layers of the picture done on a white background. Traditional oil painting method includes the following steps. 1. Making of a painting in oil starts with preparation of a support, a stretched canvas or a board. The support is sealed with glue and primed in usually white background. 2. When support is ready and background is thoroughly dry, the canvas or board is covered with very thin layer of imprimatura. This step was optional. The imprimatura is a very thin layer of well-diluted oil paint. This layer is so thin that it is almost transparent, and the white background is showing through it. Imprimatura is used to take off the whiteness of the canvas and give the support required color tint. 3. The drawing is transferred on the support afterwards and fixed with a brush. 4. The next layer is underpainting. This layer will be described in detail in this lesson later on. 5. When underpainting is dry, the fine artist might decide to make a dead color layer. Dead layers will also be covered in depth in this video lesson. 6. After the dead layer, the old masters applied flesh colors. 7. The painting was finished in glazing and a year later covered with varnish. These are the main steps of the painting process as done traditionally by the old masters. This process was improved and modified from generation to generation of artists and from school to school in various European countries. Please note that this method is suited well for painting on white or light backgrounds. Some artists choose mid-tone or dark backgrounds. The described method has to be modified for that purpose. As you know, oil paints have quite a long drying time. The traditional method only works when every layer of oil paint is completely dry. Thus, it takes time to complete an artwork. The drying time depends on various factors, such as chemical composition of the paint, mediums, thickness of the layer, temperature, etc. When it comes to the underpainting layer, you need to make sure it is completely dry before going forward with the artwork. There are several methods you may employ to speed up the drying time and avoid damage to the upper paint layers. 1. Make sure you're using pigments that speed up the drying time and bond together with oil. Such paints like lead white, natural, and burn okra, red mars, black oxide of iron, cobalt, and berlin lazur have good drying time. Paints that dry slowly and form soft film after drying are not well suited for the purpose of underpainting. Such paints are titanium white, zinc white, Lamp Black, Kraplock, Cadmium, and Ultramarine. 2. In accordance with the main rule of oil painting, the fat over lean, lower layers must contain less fat and be less elastic and more rigid than upper layers, so the paint for underpainting must contain the least oil. This can be done in several ways. 
you can reduce the oil content by extracting it from the paint by squeezing it on a gypsum plate or paper and letting the gypsum or paper absorb oil. You can also add one part of the lead white pigment to three parts of the paint. Such pigment can be grinded on a paint making plate mixed with turpentine. Such paint dries more quickly and is more rigid when dry. For painting, such paint can be diluted with turpentine or Damar varnish without oil. Do not use oil mediums for the underpainting layer. If you have enough time to wait for the first layers of the painting to dry, you can use oil paints as they come out of a tube. When the underpainting is completely dry, it is a good idea to rub the paint surface with a fine sandpaper to take off the very top film of linoxine, which can prevent a good bond between the underpainting and the following layers of paint. Many artists do a monochrome underpainting, which is similar to grisé. The monochrome underpainting follows the same fat over lean rule. Technically, it can be done from light to shade by means of glazing, which are very thin transparent layers, or from dark to light using white paints. Brown underpainting has often been used in oil painting right from the 15th to 17th centuries. Such an approach was widespread up to the point where fine artists explored oil painting on dark backgrounds. Painter Peter Brugel Sr. was a great master of brown underpainting. He was very skilled in combining such underpaintings with intense transparent layers, which he applied with ease and virtuosity. The application of underpainting in one color or monochrome is quite a simple process. At this step, a fine artist isn't concerned with colors, but only with tonal values. This provides the unity to the painting and actually speeds up the painting process. Until this point, you have been listening about the oil painting method on white background. As I already mentioned, some fine artists work on dark backgrounds. It is time to describe this process as well. Working from dark to light has many advantages. In fact, many big scale and famous paintings were done in such a manner. First, the fine artist covers the canvas with a dark background. The imprimatura is not required in this case. When the background is dry, the artist continues with lighter colors. Usually the old masters were using lead white, starting with very thin layers and gradually increasing the pastosity or thickness of layers. They were finishing modeling the light areas in very opaque and impasto brush strokes, which completely covered the background tone. Such an approach provided the infinite variety of transparent, semi-transparent, and opaque gradations between light and shade, which allowed depicting three-dimensional volumes of space and objects. The method of painting on dark backgrounds was developed during European Baroque times. This style was used thereafter for more than 300 years across the whole of Europe. Tidium was a great master of painting on dark backgrounds. He was using brown-red backgrounds. Then he was doing underpainting in white and finishing in opaque layers in full color and using color glazing. Paintings which are done on dark backgrounds might become darker with time. This happens because layers containing white paint turn out more transparent over a long period of time. This is the reason why so many old paintings have dark colors today. The method of painting from dark to light is not an invention of Baroque times. It was used before in the Renaissance times and even earlier in medieval paintings. The method of the underpainting from dark to light was widely used in the past and now is considered as a classical approach. Some fine artists were still using this method in the 19th century. This method has the following steps. On the white chalk ground on a wooden board or white emulsion on a canvas, a fine artist was making a drawing. Then this drawing was outlined with a brush in dark watercolor paint. When the drawing is done, the support is covered with oil resin based imprimatura, the color of which is not too dark and suited for the overall color of the future painting. Any excess amount of imprimatura, which is not absorbed by the ground, is wiped off with a soft cloth. Then the fine artist begins working in opaque white tempera, starting with the thinnest mid shadows and continuing with more layers of tempera to achieve lighter and more opaque lights. When modeling off forms is complete in white tempera, the fine artist can proceed with transparent, colorful glazing in several layers. Every layer is applied when the previous one is thoroughly dry. In the following step, the fine artist uses semi-transparent and opaque paints. At the same time, shades are being painted in colors darker than imprimatura. Here's an example of the classical method which I have just described. This painting, The Drunken Old Woman, by Jan van Hemmesen, from 1500 to 1566, which is exhibited in the National Gallery in Prague, has dark imprimatura and brightening in white. The white pigment of underpainting is applied more thickly than on older paintings of Dutch masters of the 15th century. The imprimatura is brick red and shades are brown. This is the painting Adoration of the Three Kings by Geerten Taunt St. Jans, 1465-1495. It is done on light yellow imprimatura with underpainting in brown color. The brightening in white paint on top of the imprimatura is mostly applied for lights and mid-shades. White paint is very thin because the imprimatura is quite light. 
This painting is done in thin layers, and the white background plays its role in the tonal values. Such a painting approach preserves the brightness of colors throughout the centuries very well. After the removal of old and dirty varnish, this painting looks fresh and vibrant, as if it was painted just a few years ago. This method goes back to Jan van Eyck, who developed and perfected it. Another example of the red imprimatura is the painting Crucifixion, dating back to 1380 to 1390, displayed in the National Gallery. The flesh color of the background is brightened up in multiple layers of white paint. The light and mid-shades are left untouched, so the original color of imprimatura plays the role of a mid-tone. The shades are done in glazing with transparent brown paint. All these examples are witness to the fact that from the 14th to the 18th centuries, the tonal values of objects on a painting were achieved in a very limited range of paints of imprimatura and underpainting, mainly in brown and white, rather than by a multitude of paints mixed on a palette. If underpainting is done properly, it facilitates overpainting or upper layers. If it seems that if one has to fight to obscure the underpainting, it is a sign that it was not done properly. Here's a good test for the correctly done underpainting. If you can finish a painting with transparent layers of glazing over an underpainting, then such an underpainting contributes to the artwork. Colors of underpainting and overpainting are mixed optically, giving nuances that are not otherwise achievable. In its simplest terms, an underpainting is a monochrome version of the final painting, intended to initially fix the composition, give volume and substance to the forms, and distribute darks and lights in order to create the effect of illumination. The lack of color probably explains the word dead in the term dead painting. Color was then applied over the underpainting only when it was thoroughly dry. An underpainting makes painting of complex forms easier. If a fine artist is constantly fixing incorrectly depicted shapes, working on half-dry paint surface, colors can become muddy. If underpainting is done correctly, the artist does not spend time on fixing forms and shapes, but can concentrate on colors. The painting in such cases will be performed with more confidence and better results. Well-performed underpainting is a very helpful step in the classical method of painting. It contributes to the painting and exists in complete harmony with overpainting and glazing. Upper layers must be darker than underpainting, according to the rule of darker paint layers over lighter underpainting. The portrait of Lady Velskaya by Joseph Maines is painted on a white oil background. The underpainting is done in a gray grisaille. For this grisaille, the fine artist was using a gray blend of black and white oil paints, mixed on a palette. Before the restoration of this grisaille layer was clearly visible in places where the top layers were rubbed off. The x-ray photograph reveals that grisaille underpainting is quite thick, not only in light places but also in shades as well. The grisaille layer can be done in one attempt or in several sessions. The rule of fat over lean needs to be applied here. Grisaille is quite a simple technique. Also, it's important to let grisaille underpainting dry completely before continuing with the next color layers. When grisaille is used as an underpainting with intent to continue painting with color layers on top, the fine artist must keep in mind that the upper layers might have reduced bonding with the grisaille layer. To increase the bond between grisaille and the following layers, an artist can rub dry grisaille's surface with sandpaper and then cover it with a retouch varnish. Please note that any other covering varnish is not suitable for application between layers. Grisaille in black and white does not add any colors to the painting. It only creates tonal variations of light and shade. As with any underpainting, the tones and intensity of grisaille need to be lighter and less intense than the finished work intends to be. This is required because the optical mixing of the underpainting with transparent and semi-transparent upper layers will make the finished artwork darker. Because gray grisaille lacks color, many fine artists choose to make underpainting in color. Oil paints are mixed on a palette and tonal values are made deliberately lighter and less intense than the finished painting will be. At this step, the fine artist is using a very limited number of colors and isn't concerned much with all the nuances. For that purpose, a necessary amount of paint is pre-mixed beforehand in a limited color range. In the oil painting guide published in the 19th century, artists were advised to do underpainting on absorbing grounds, so oil from the paint was absorbed quite quickly and thinner evaporates, leaving a hard but not completely dry layer, which can be worked on to complete the underpainting. When the underpainting is complete, it is left to dry and then sandpapered and covered with retouch varnish, so the painting process can continue. It is hard to tell which of the underpainting methods is best. It depends on your creative tasks. One may be used for a maximum colorful effect, another for illusion of the three-dimensional space and chiaroscuro. Therefore, it is up to an artist which underpainting method to choose. The method of grisaille might be easier to handle for a beginner because it only requires getting the forms right and an interesting composition. There's no color to worry about. Thus, a beginner can be more relaxed and do a better job. 
For an experienced fine artist, grisaille is also a good technique because all the complexities of color can be applied in upper layers on top of the grisaille. Having a good underpainting helps enormously to keep the unity of the artwork and a certain style, which resembles the old masters. Here is the example of two kinds of underpainting combined in one artwork. First, the artist did the Flemish style, which is light brown imprimatura and brown shades of the figure and the chair. On top of this layer, the second underpainting is applied in white and gray paint, which is Italian style. Very thin layers of white oil paint can portray all tiny gradations of light and shade. Gray Grisaille makes the painting complete, but lacks color. When pure white paint is applied on top, it looks a bit strange and optically foreign. That is why Venetian painters of the 16th century were using four so-called dead colors for finishing layers of the underpainting. They were adding to white oil the following colors, yellow, red, or black. So various combinations of white, cold black, yellow, and red produces six main colors in addition to yellow, black, and white. Green as a mix of white, black, and yellow. Purple as a mix of red, black, and white. Blue as a mix of black and white. The underpainting done in these six colors was more colorful than gray grisaille. As a rule, all these paints were prepared beforehand rather than mixed on a palette. The underpainting was painted lighter and with less intensity than the intended finished artwork. The old masters called these colors dead colors, so the technique of the old masters included the warm imprimatura, usually red or brown, and then cold underpainting in dead colors. On top of the cold underpainting, the old masters applied several layers of warmer, full-color glazing. Sometimes other dead color paints were used, like gray-blue or gray-green. The Flemish method of oil painting is well presented in masterpieces by Rubens. This is especially apparent in his oil sketches and preparatory oil artworks. The name of the dead colors derives from two reasons. First, these are cold colors, and second, they are buried under the upper layers. A dead layer of gray on top of umber produces slightly purplish grisaille. Working in transparent warm glazing on top of this grisaille gives a very interesting effect of human skin. The surface of the skin is warm and pinkish, while cold underlayers are showing through, creating an effect of veins and flesh under skin. Typically, the dead layer is painted in two phases. The initial phase covers the umber layer and lays the groundwork for the details. The second phase brings the dead layer as close to the final detail quality as I can make it. I have to describe a difference between grisaille underpainting and grisaille painting. The term grisaille is often used for both cases. However, in the case of the underpainting, the grisaille layer is completely covered with colorful top layers. Gray grisailles can be left alone as finished paintings. Such artworks are usually executed entirely in monochrome or near monochrome, for example in shades of gray. Working in grisaille was often chosen as being quicker and cheaper, although the effect was sometimes deliberately chosen for aesthetic reasons. Grisaille paintings, normally in monochrome, resemble drawings or photographs. Here's a monochrome from a master. Ingress is thought to have used many different methods of underpainting, from a red underpaint to more direct dead color methods. A painting like this would have been done as a demonstration to his students of how you can represent three-dimensional reality in a single hue. It is also an example of using this type of monochrome study as an underpainting, as you can see the beginnings of a glaze over one of the curtain panels on the right side. As the oil painting method, grisaille and the use of dead colors becomes almost forgotten at the beginning of the 20th century, which coincides with the developing of alla prima in painting and progress in photography. These days, this method of grisaille and use of dead colors is sometimes practiced in some private ateliers. If you want to perfect your oil painting skills and have a better understanding of different oil painting methods, then please sign up to the Web Art Academy course. The Web Art Academy course will give you 12 powerful video lessons and additional video bonuses and books you can enjoy in the comfort of your home. To receive access to full video lessons and multiple video and book bonuses, you need to subscribe as a paid member. All video lessons and bonus videos are streamed online. You do not need to save those videos to your computer or have any hassles with DVD deliveries. Every video is available for you 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Here's a list of the Web Art Academy course video lessons.
you will also receive the following video bonuses. As a Web Art Academy member, you will have access to bonus books on the topics of the history of fine art, oil painting, and drawing. All books are downloadable to your computer in PDF format. You can also read them online as web pages. Every month during the course, you will get five to six new book bonuses. Books will also be available to you for a lifetime. You can download them at any time or read online for as long as it takes. The course comes at a very modest price of $47 per month for six months, or as a discounted one-time payment of $235 for the whole course. Just to help you put these figures into perspective, the value of a single video is $97, plus bonus books that are valued at $7 per book. This adds up to a total of $1,332. You can have the complete course at a massive $1,050 discount. It is time for you to choose how you can become a WebArt Academy member. You have two options. The first option is to go on a monthly basis, which costs 47 US dollars per month. These fees will be automatically charged via PayPal for six months. After the six month, you will have full lifetime free access to all video lessons and bonuses. That's right, no more payments will be due and you will be able to enjoy all future updates and upgrades, including new videos and bonuses free of charge. If you want to receive all the video lessons and bonuses at once, there is a second option, which gives you full access immediately after a one-time payment. We offer the full access at a discounted price of only $235 for the whole course. This gives you a $47 discount. In both cases, you will receive the Web Art Academy Diploma of Excellence in your name after completing the course. Let's say you want to go on a monthly basis. Then click on the Add to Cart button and the website will redirect you to the PayPal payment page. You can pay by credit or debit card, or just by using your PayPal account. It is free, easy, and secure to set up your private PayPal account. We will not have access to your credit card details. PayPal will handle membership fees on the Academy's behalf. Upon your payment, you will be automatically redirected back to the Web Art Academy membership site. Here you will need to choose your username and password. If you've chosen to subscribe to the Web Art Academy course by making just a one-time discounted payment to receive access to all the video lessons and bonuses from day one, then click on this Add to Cart button. You will be redirected to the PayPal payment page, where you can pay by a credit or debit card, or if you have PayPal, by using funds available in your account. After a one-time payment, let us know your preferred username and password via email at support at webartacademy.com. We will be happy to set up a full access account for you. Since the launch of the Web Art Academy Fine Art course, we have had very positive feedback from our students. You can check what our students and graduates have to say on this page. So, let's recap what benefits you will receive as a Web Art Academy member. You will get 12 multi-part video lessons on subjects of how to paint in oil and draw. You can watch video lessons at any time convenient to you. You will also receive video bonuses, how to oil paint demonstrations, you will receive more than 24 art books as bonuses. You can download them to your computer or read online. You will have exclusive access to the Academy founders, Natalie Ricci and Vladimir London. Send us your art-related questions and we will be happy to help you individually. On completing the course, you will receive the Web Art Academy Diploma of Excellence in your name. The course is well suited for both beginners and advanced art students. Beginners will get valuable information on how to get started with oil painting and drawing, while advanced students will discover the classical oil painting methods that are not taught at the contemporary art schools and colleges. You can suspend or cancel your membership at any time. In the case of cancellation, you will continue to enjoy all video lessons and bonuses you have paid for. After completing the course, your membership will become free of charge. This includes all future updates and upgrades. We know that one of your biggest questions is, will I improve my oil painting and drawing skills by taking the Web Art Academy course? Is it a good value for my money? Consider this. Contemporary education at any fine art college or university will take up to five years and will cost you many thousands of dollars with no guarantee that you will become a proficient fine artist. If you expect that your college teachers will sit in front of you and show you how to paint and draw a complete artwork from start to finish, think again. It will not happen in any contemporary art school. We offer you a unique opportunity to experience the step-by-step -step process of classical oil painting and drawing. 
It is as good as sitting next to a professional fine artist, watching how she paints while listening to her explain the complete process. The best time to invest in your art career is right now. The current trial price will go up in the future. Do not wait. Take action now and sign up for the art course by clicking the Add to Cart button below. Get your lifetime membership for a fraction of the price now. Click the Add to Cart button below. Enrolling to the Web Art Academy is completely risk-free. You can cancel your membership at any time. We also offer a money-back guarantee. There's a reason why you're watching this webinar. You want to learn how to paint in oils and draw. You want to improve your fine art skills, and you want to live your passion. The Web Art Academy is the perfect solution to your desires. In a moment, you will get your access to fine art video lessons. Get what you want right now. Click the Add to Cart button below. In a few minutes from now, you can have your very own access to the Web Art Academy dashboard with fine art video lessons and bonuses. See you there.